Hello YouTube, this is Wheat King and thanks for watching my first tutorial in After Effects. Today we're going to look at how to make the bullet time effect that you see here. This video was for the Corridor Digital Video Submission Contest. And I tried to make a bullet time sequence that simulates movies like The Matrix. Today we're not going to be able to cover every single effect seen in this video. We're just going to look at the bullet time displacement that you see here. So I've attempted bullet time in previous videos before. So you can see all of these videos on YouTube if you click on the respective links. The first one here was bullet time in 10 seconds. I just had a short clip of me dodging bullets. The second video that I made was called an action sequence and this involved basically uh, the conclusion was a bullet time sequence. The third video that I made was called Trigger and this one also had a bullet time sequence in the finale. And finally bullet time in 20 seconds was the quarter digital video that I made for submission. So now we're going to look at how to make the bullet time sequence all in After Effects. So first we need to start by tracking the footage in 3D. By doing so the camera in After Effects knows exactly where each element in the footage is. You can use Buju or Synthize or any other 3D program to track your footage. Um, I prefer to use Synthize because that's what I've been using for quite a while now. I'm going to show you a brief tutorial on how to use Synthize. So we're going to import our footage and make sure all the settings here are okay. It's a 24p and aspect ratio is 1 and it's com including all of the frames. We're going to hit OK and here you see it's importing the footage and you can see we can scroll through the timeline. And Synthize is really easy because you can just hit this big green auto button and it's going to start automatically tracking all the points uh, in the footage. Now, uh, given that there's not too much motion by the camera shake or too many moving objects inside the footage, Synthize does a really good job of just being able to track all the points for you automatically. So I'm going to fast forward to the end of this tracking. It takes a couple of minutes usually. Humbugledinger. Alright, so it looks like the program has done tracking. It took about 18 seconds to finish uh, calculating all the points and making all the 3D calculations. So let's take a look. You can see on the bottom right here that all the points are now very well tracked with the video. And if I scrub through, you can see all the points are nicely lined up. We can go ahead and export this to After Effects, but what I'd like to do first is to define a set of axes for After Effects later. Because right now the program doesn't know where the ground is or where the vertical direction is. So what I can do is I can click on this XYZ button and I can click on this uh, star 3 to define three points for my axes. So I'm going to hit this button here and I'm going to set first the X axis which I will set as uh, going from this point to this point is will be the x-axis. And then to set the z-axis, I find a point that's perpendicular to the x-axis on the ground somewhere. So somewhere right here, this point is probably good. So I will say yes to apply the coordinate system. It'll take a few seconds to uh, apply this. And now if I s zoom out here on the, on the three plots, you can see that the camera is nicely lined up with the shot. And if you see the top view here, the first the camera is facing front and as I move the camera and rotate, you can see the camera motion is replicated exactly by the virtual camera here. And that's great. So now when we export to After Effects, the program will exactly know which way is X, Y, and Z. So we can go ahead and go to File, export After Effects via .ma and then we can go ahead and call this to save and all this is good and press OK and now it's done saving now we can move into After Effects so here we are in After Effects I can go ahead and import the tracker that I just saved which I put in plate and tracker here import that and also import my plate footage, which is plate. And so now if I double click on the composition, 
and I drag my plate footage into the composition, you can see that the tracker squares perfectly line up with every element in the footage, which is great. So now we can do a uh, lot more fun stuff, say we can put in uh, the clip of Sam shooting from Quarter Digital. Uh, here we have Sam here shooting. If we import him into the composition, if we put him on top, and we can make him a 3D object and he will automatically fit into the, into the plate. But first what we're going to do is change the anchor point so that the anchor point is here so that it lines up roughly with the middle uh, bottom of his feet. Now we're going to turn him into a 3D object by hitting toggle and hitting this button here. And so he disappears because the camera is not necessarily facing where he is right now. So what we need to do is position him somewhere in this blank area right here. And now we have all these trackers here. You can see there's there are over a hundred trackers here. So what we need to do is find the tracker that most corresponds to this area right here. So maybe this tracker right here or something. So we can go ahead and just figure out which tracker that is. I'm going to just go ahead and select this one. Okay, perfect. So this one is the tracker that corresponds to here. So I'm going to use the position of this tracker and I'm also going to hide all the other trackers so that it doesn't mess up the scene and distract us. So I'm basically hiding it and also making it invisible. Okay, so I use the position of this tracker right here and I just type it in here 1.9, 0 0.1, 114.0 and now you can sort of see Sam's feet here um, he's actually way too big right now so we need to scale him down to say 3% okay great footage here is about the right scale because the height is roughly the same as it would be a real person inside this footage so now we can also move him to roughly the center of the parking lot by moving him in the X, Y, and Z direction. And then we can also rotate him so that he faces the camera because the footage was shot where he was facing the camera. We don't want to rotate it too far out because essentially what this is, it's like a poster cutout, but it's a video. So if we line it up so that it's directly facing the camera, this will sort of hide the effect the 2D effect and sell the overall uh, video. So this is basically how we get 2D footage such as this green screen keyed footage onto a 3D space. And So you can see that he's nicely tracked in there. Okay, so now we move on to the meat of the tutorial which is the bullet time effect. So first what we're going to do is make a new solid and I'm going to call it bullet time effect and I'll make it blue okay make it comp size All right. I'm gonna do a particular particular switch for particular and apply it to the effect now first you don't see anything but I'm going to turn off all the layers and also turn off the camera and so basically this is the default particular generator um, we're gonna make some few changes to the emitter and particle now I've made a preset called particular bullet time for when I use it so uh, I can just click on it and work with that right off the bat but we're going to make our preset essentially right now so we're going to hit emitter uh, we're going to change the direction to directional and turn down the velocity and also velocity random even though it doesn't matter uh, and then we're going to go to particle and then we're going to change the size to let's say seven for now so we can sort of more clearly see the particle okay and then the rest of the settings will tweak later so basically what this does is it generates particles at the emitter position x y and z and what we want to do is we want to set keyframes to move the emitter position from one point to another this way it'll look like the particles are being generated in sort of a stream. So what we can do is set 
one keyframe here, move a couple of seconds down, and then set the keyframe over here. I did not set the keyframe. Set the keyframes, move a couple of seconds down, and set another keyframe. And this, what this does is basically looks like a already the beginning of a bullet time sequence. Okay, so what we're going to do to enhance this effect is first turn up the particle life so that it's at least the length of your footage so it doesn't disappear over time. And then we're going to change the size random a little bit like this and maybe the size back down to the 4. And now we can see that sort of like uh, random fluctuations in the air when a bullet slices through in bullet time. So this is the effect I've used for both my uh, quarter digital submission and also for the the short film called Trigger. Um, this is sort of a random random fluctuation in the air effect. I can turn on the particles for a second to show basically how the randomization effect works. Maybe 30 is good. 30. Okay, um, for the first two bullet time videos that I've made, bullet time in 10 seconds, and also for an action sequence, I did not use a random fluctuation sort of thing. I used a more, uh, more ordered sort of sine wave oscillation uh, in the bullet time because in the matrix, they use a sort of a oscillation in their bullet time as well. So to do that, I first need to turn down the size random to zero, so it's all the same size, and then in the size, I'm going to first turn it up to five. In the size, I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write an expression that uses the sine function so that we can use the oscillations that are built into the sine function. So if we type in math.sine parentheses time, this will allow the particle to change size over time uh, and oscillate through with the sine function. Now, sine, since sine oscillates from positive 1 to negative 1, and a particle can't be negative 1 in size, we need to at least make everything positive. So I'm going to add 2 to that. So I'm going to add 2 to this. And now you can sort of see that the particle is big, and then it gets small, and it gets big again, and it oscillates. And so I can tweak these numbers a little bit more. Maybe I want to multiply this by 2. And also make the oscillations faster. So 4 times the t speed of time here. So now you can sort of see the oscillations in effect. And I can turn down the number of particles to per second to say 15. And now you can really see that the bullet time trail is oscillating in sort of a matrixy like effect. I can make this maybe six times. There we go, that's nice. And I can also tweak the particle feathering, which is here, feathering, and also the opacity a little bit. And I can change the opacity over life to say something like this. And that looks good. And the great thing about Particular is it generates these particles in 3D space. So if I made a new camera, I can basically rotate the camera. And you can see that the particles are in 3D space. And the camera rotates around the particles. Fantastic. All right. All right. So now I'm going to delete the camera. And we're going to implement this oscillation bullet time into our original plate footage. So we're going to turn on everything back again. Okay. The bullet time effect disappears because the camera, the virtual camera, is not pointing at where we originally set the bullet time effect. So I'm going to reset the keyframes here. And now I'm going to. Um, reapply the keyframes to where the proper position should be which is in front of his gun. So I'm gonna perhaps maybe move this down a little bit and let's say he starts shooting right here I can set the
the start of particular by dragging the the layer over to the start and then I can turn on particular and also turn on the keyframe I know roughly where the footage of Sam is and I can just hit P for position and reveal his position so I'm going to copy that position onto the X Y and Z position of the emitter so 13.2 0 0.1 and 96.6 so this sets the emitter to be at the base of his feet and I'm going to now turn down the particle size by alt clicking here oops not that by clicking on size ah <clears throat> going to go to size here and make it maybe 0 0.02 okay too small 0 0.2 0 0.15 okay so that's roughly the size that i want and now i'm going to move the particle up to where the muzzle of his gun roughly is so maybe a negative 6.3 the thing about uh, synthize is it sometimes inverts the y-axis so instead of positive going up it's now negative going up so that gets a little confusing sometimes okay and then let's see I'll move it to the right a little bit 15 too much 14 that's pretty good, roughly where the start of his gun is. And so now I'm going to set the keyframe at the beginning here and move a couple seconds down and set a keyframe. Move the z axis so that it's more spread out like this. Uh, I move the z axis away from where he is toward the negative end, and so it basically looks like the bullet is traveling uh, past the camera. It's a little slow right now so I can increase this to say uh, 20 and let's increase this to 50 too much 40 okay and also I want to increase the number of oscillations maybe 15 times okay and then also plus 1.5 there's a lot of tweaking here and that can go on um, plus 2.5 and multiply by 0.1 okay so that's pretty good the uh, and I might uh, turn down number of particles per second okay Great. So this will look like he's shooting and the bullet time trail goes past the camera and sort of continues to hang in the air for a little while while the camera turns around. And you can see that right there. Now in the actual footage that I shot, I intended there to be many more bullet trails so that uh, lots more bullet trails fly by the camera and it's a lot more cool looking than just this single hanging bullet trail thing here in the air okay so now we basically have the bullet time sequence down and we're going to uh, make the effect of displacement um, so it looks like the bullet time trail is distorting the air um, around the where the bullet is going so first what we're going to do is pre-compose the bullet time effect layer go to layer pre-compose uh, bullet time effect comp one great move all attributes to the new composition press ok and we're also going to pre-compose the plate footage which consists of the background and Sam shooting layer pre-compose pre-comp one sounds good and press ok now you notice both Sam and the bullet time trail disappear and that's because uh, we need to put the camera into each of these pre-comps so when I hit Control C or Command C to copy the camera. And we're going to double click and paste the camera 
into each of the pre comps. And this way, when we, go, when we go back to the top layer, top composition, we can see that both Sam and the bullet time trail are back because now the camera is, the virtual camera is now in both of the pre comps. Okay, so now what we're going to do is select the pre comp, uh, the plate, and we're going to go to displacement. Type in displacement. We want to use the effect called displacement map. Move that there. I want to set the displacement map layer to the bullet time trail. And also use for horizontal and vertical displacement, we can use lightness since uh, we made everything, the particles, white. And now if we turn off the bullet time effect here for a second, we scrub through a little bit and we're going to wrap pixels around. We're going to increase the vertical and horizontal displacement. And you can see that it's essentially uh, displacing the pixels behind on the plate layer and moving them into the um, into the bullet time trail. So it gives us sort of a, a refractive effect. And we don't want to exaggerate it too much, but uh, this is pretty good and also this is pretty good okay and as we scrub through we can see that the refractive effect remains and you can see that the light is sort of getting bent around or through as it goes through the bullet time trail and sometimes it's sort of invisible here turn the dark areas and also when it's completely light say above the above the road in this area it's pretty hard to see so we're going to want to turn back on the bullet time composition and maybe change it to screen and also turn down the opacity a little bit this way it'll sort of highlight where the bullet time trail is going and now you can sort of see it's a little bit better in the darker areas you can see it's a little bit of a hazy foggy effect but it sort of outlines where the bullet time effect should be Okay, um, and we can also tweak, we can still tweak the bullet time by going back to the original comp, pre-comp and going to the bullet time layer and let's say I want to feather this a little bit more I want to feather a little bit more, I can go to feather here and turn up the feathering a little bit to make it a little bit softer and now you can see the changes are applied to both the displacement and also to the outline here um, so basically this is how the bullet time effect is done and let's turn up the particles per second a little bit more emitter 40 mm, 35 okay and uh, one other effect I'd like to add is to put the bullet time pre-comp into the plate pre-comp like this and maybe also turn up the opacity a little bit and this way what happens is the displacement effect also applies to the bullet time uh, trail which originally was in white like this the displacement effect applies to that so this sort of gives it a little white fringe if, I, if you see I can move this around it gives it a white fringe that looks a little bit more glassy and done properly it looks kind of like uh, sort of a, a reflection of the light in the scene and gives it a little bit more realistic look so right now look and I can probably move it to here because the light the sunlight's coming down and it's shining and it's probably highlighting the top of the the glassy bubble and the darks the the other side is pretty dark so that's pretty good I can move it to the left and right make it more glassy like like this and then I can also turn back on the original highlighting layer to make it more visible and maybe turn down the opacity a little bit more there we go uh, we don't want to exaggerate these effects too much but just a little bit of highlighting is good like that so that's pretty much it for the bullet time trail effect uh, one more thing to add the way I've arranged the pre-comps here if I wanted to change the position of the bullet time trail, I can just go back into the bullet time 
um, original pre-comp in the layer here and I can change for example the final position of the bullet trail and let's say I want to go a little bit this way I want it to fly really close to the camera something like this and now let's see it's gonna fly really close to the camera the camera is gonna almost intersect it Great. Uh, you notice that once the camera gets really close the particles start to fade out so what we can do is we can go down to visibility near start fade turn that all the way down to one so this this way the particles won't start fading once it gets too close to the camera and now if I go back to the final shot here we can see that all of the highlights and the um, glassy effects remain there uh, because we've used the same pre-comp in all of our effects so that if we change just one layer here all the subsequent layers get applied to it so you notice that there are a few limitations to what we're doing here and the bullet time glassy effect only looks really good when it's semi far away but when it's really close to the camera the effect is kind of destroyed and we have to manually modify say the display displacement map so that it looks a little bit more glassy or we need to modify say the feathering of the sphere so that it doesn't look so faded out such as this so thing, uh, things need to be tweaked for every event um, change this down to like 25 Basically, the bullet time sequence needs to be effect, uh, changed for every time that we tweak it. Um, this is also a limitation of using a oscillation bullet time effect instead of just a random distortion uh, of the air, which I've used recently. This is also uh, this requires a lot more timing and a lot more uh, numbers and calculations to tweak. Uh, to make it look just right, I can see that that's pretty good. Maybe you put it to half. I'll try and play it through here. It gives a nice little bubble, bubble like or glassy like effect that we want for the bullet time trail. It's pretty good. Maybe turn this back on actually. There we go. play this back and now sort of see the glassy bullet time trail that's left behind by the bullet it's nice and rounded and this has the oscillations that we first worked with okay so now we're going to look at how to make the bullet that precedes the bullet trail um, some people like to use a 2d image and just set in 3D space and let it fly by the camera but if the camera changes angle too much then it sort of does the same effect as what we had here with the SAM uh, video clip where if the camera angle changes too much it looks fake because it looks like a cardboard cutout of a bullet instead of a 3D like bullet in real space so what I did was for at least this video I created my own sort of two and a half D bullet and how to explain this is I'm going to make essentially two solids and have them perpendicular to each other and this way it sort of sells the effect of a 3D object okay so what we're gonna do is go to layer new solid we're gonna call this bullet uh, back back we're gonna make it yellow so it's like the color of the bullet and press OK. And then we're also going to duplicate this and rename it Bullet Side. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool and draw out the side of the bullet. So something like uh, this. Wow, I cannot see it at all. There we go. 
draw out the side of the bullet. This is just a rough drawing of the bullet. And then I can smooth out the sides a little bit more. There we go. Oops. So it looks like the side of the bullet. Perhaps it's a little too long. Great. Alright, and then, then I'm going to use the ellipse tool and draw out the back of the bullet, which is just a circle here. Roughly the same height as the side of the bullet. Okay, so now I'm going to change the anchor point so that it lines up with the center here. And also the anchor point of the side of the bullet so that it lines up here like this. And uh, I'm going to turn off the camera for now and also the other two layers so that we can just isolate these two layers. Okay, so now we're going to change the two layers to a 3D object, 3D layer here by clicking on 3D. And I'm going to rotate the back of the bullet 90 degrees. So hit W, rotate, press and hold shift to rotate in 90 degrees like this. And now what happens is the back and the side of the bullet are perpendicular to each other and if we made a new camera here we can rotate the camera around and see that if we rotate it at least this way it looks almost like a 3D object even though it's just two 2D objects linked together. Okay, we're going to delete the camera here. Or Before we finish this we're going to link the back of the bullet to the side of the bullet by pick whipping the two layers together. This way if I rotate the side of the bullet then the back of the bullet also rotates as well. Okay, so now we're going to turn on all the layers again and we're going to link the bullet to the emitter of the particular effect. So what we can do is let's just go ahead and copy this back to the top layer here and turn it off and then go to effects particular emitter position XY. So we want to copy these three coordinates onto the position of the bullet here. So we're going to alt click on the stopwatch and pick whip first to the position XY of the emitter here. The problem here is since there's only two coordinates for the XY and there's a separate coordinate for the Z coordinate here we need to actually modify this uh, expression a little bit more. So we're going to actually go ahead and copy this one here and paste it again on a new line and we're going to call temp1 and temp2 and change the second temp variable to instead of position XY position Z. And so now we need to change this temp1 here to 0, temp1 one, 1 and temp2 to 0. <clears throat> now what this does is it links the bullet to the XYZ position of the emitter. And of course the bullet right now is massive so we're going to change the scale to say 3% or maybe even less 1% 0 0.03 0 0.07 that's about the right size and we're also going to rotate the bullet Oops. and we're also going to rotate the bullet so that it faces forward holding shift and just rotating it forward maybe we can make it a little bit bigger 0 0.1 so now you can see that the bullet as we scrub through the timeline is linked with the emitter and so it looks like the bullet is creating that bullet time trail just like that let's see if I can play it through and if we if we play it through it looks like the bullet is going and creating that displacement in the air just like that okay 
and some other things we can do is we can turn on say motion blur and also motion blur for the comp so that the bullet is a little bit blurred and gives it a little bit more motion just like this okay so that's it for the bullet time tutorial this tutorial covered how to track in 3d and also using particular to make a bullet time trail effect all in after effects and also how to create a simple 2.5d sprite bullet to sell the effect of a flying bullet through the air if you have any questions please leave in the comment section below and i will answer them in a very timely manner uh, thank you for watching my tutorial hopefully i'll make some more tutorials for other effects that i've created um, in the coming few weeks thanks a lot